Hi, my name is Claire. I work at Somasource. Um, and what I'm going to talk today about today is the data supply chain. So we're we, we're not data scientists. We actually do a lot of data work. Um, uh, and what I am excited about right now is the internet and specifically submarine fiber optic cables because they're really changing who is doing work and where. Um, this is our global plumbing. As you can see, there's places that are really dense, like the Mediterranean and the west coast of the United States and New York City. And there are places that are really sparse, like Africa or South America or uh, the poor developing countries. And it is growing in the same way that all traditional infrastructure grows. Uh, so it goes to cities first, and very slowly it gets out into rural areas. And what this means is that there's economic disparity. So as you know, if you're like me and you're from a rural community, you know that it takes a lot longer for job opportunities to get there. And when I say I'm from a rural community, I'm from Klamath Falls, Oregon, which is the least densely populated part of the country. Um, and and it's exciting to me um, to think about this stuff because there's not economic opportunity there. We're not in a recession. We've been in a recession for 20 years. And, um, and what that also means is that you know, not only is there a data disparity, there's, there's just an access challenge. Um, and, and the access challenge is profound. You go over the hills and all of the lights go off in, on your cell phone signal. Um, and so what this led me to do is right out of business school, I joined a company called LiveOps. And uh, LiveOps is a distributed work company. So if you've heard of them, you'll know that they uh, take work from companies like Pizza Hut or Guthy Renker and distribute them over the internet to women working in their homes in Kansas and Oregon. And it's a fantastic uh, option against things like 7-Eleven, where that's what the local labor market is. And so that's exciting. Um, you know, what is really going to happen, though, is that we have 24 cable landings on the west coast of the United States. Soon, access will be ubiquitous you'll be able to access it from anywhere. I won't just be checking in with a, uh, you know, a VSAC connection, which I do when I go home. Um, and, and what that means is that there's, there's really a bigger need, and the bigger need um, at Samasource that we're trying to address is in Kenya. Kenya, Uganda, uh, Pakistan, rural India, Haiti, and uh, South Africa. And what we're trying to do is, as they're developing infrastructure, help them develop internet by really making labor ubiquitous there, international distributed labor. And, and to bring it back to data, we do about half a million dollars of, uh, ooh, sorry, I'm getting excited. Um, we do about half a million dollars of data supply chain work in Kenya alone every year. And that's things like helping, uh, helping rural BPOs get set up to do large data contracts um, with Fortune 100 companies. Um, this is uh, our head engineer, Dave, uh, helping, helping a very, very rural center get back on the grid. Um, and, and what's exciting is that they, they got their connection a year and a half ago. So there's been ubiquitous data in Kenya for 18 months, and, and there are two cable landings on the east coast of, of, of East Africa. Um, and, and that means that it's like, yikes, it's scary. They're really, really off the grid. But it's exciting because we have 1,200 workers who are you know, in their early 20s. They are all on Facebook. They're facing 70% unemployment, and they are taking it to the internet faster than you can believe. They are already starting to do things like outsourcing. And it, it matters because when you have 70% unemployment, this is the local alternative to 7-Eleven. This is a guy carving uh, little giraffes out of uh, beef bones in a, in a hut in the Kibera slum. And, uh, and what's exciting to me is that, you know, people in Klamath Falls, Oregon pick up technology, they're getting into it. People in Kenya are picking it up way faster. So even in really rural farms, you can get people who are using a phone to get access to local commodity prices. In Nairobi, there's an incubation hub. Like, there's a tech incubator in downtown Nairobi, and it's obviously, because this is it, um, really packed and quite active. They are hell-bent on using technology to take them into the 21st century. Um, and what we're excited about is that the number one way to do that is with labor. So this is one of our partners, uh, Diana, in her old office. Uh, she started with us and had about three people doing work. We do, do content and data work. And uh, she's got 70 people now, and her goal is to have 1,000 by the time she's 40, which is in a few years. Um, and so. My goal is to take their rural communities' work, you know, to bring, bring that economic disparity into a flat line so that everywhere people go, they can have access to this work. So my challenge for you, my, my spark for you guys, is that there's more cultural capital in this, in this room. There's more opportunities. Um, take one sprint, take one hack day, one Saturday, 
uh, think about a way that you can, you can really take that out into the, the last mile. Uh, because you can change things so quickly there, whether it's through Somasaurus, and I'm happy to hear from you, or whether it's through whatever project you're working on, just, just take it out there. <laughs>